what's going on um as i stated earlier in a previous video if there were was going to be any updates as it relates to the uh, off-campus Frostburg State University shootings, if there was any developments or any suspects or any charges brought. Um, I indicated that I would cover that in the event that that happened. It looks like um, they have brought charges against a few individuals. I'm sure it's an ongoing case still, but this is one of them right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, like we usually do, we're going to um, get into the charging documents, the affidavits of probable cause. We're going to see um, what charges they're facing, and we're just going to get into the finite details. Um, so first we start with um, two of, I guess we should say, the, um, the individuals who are most connected to the situation. So first we have this individual right here, Javon Vincent. Epifanio, I don't know. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And then the second one is Benjamin uh, Laurent Atiyam. Um, that's the second one. Um, we have both of their, or I should say, I have both of their um, affidavits for probable cause. I have both of their charging documents, um, but both of them are very similar. Uh, it's notable that Javon's is two pages longer, so we're going to be looking at his charging document. But um, both documents um, essentially disclose the same information, except uh, Javon's is a little bit longer. So with that being said, we're going to pull up the charging document, and we're going to get into what the state is alleging against them. So here we go. This is the charging document. Now, just a heads up as we go through this charging document, um, some of the names have been redacted by me personally. I did those redactions when I picked these documents up. Um, they were not redacted, um, but I did that just because I know that um, obviously there's the gentleman who is deceased, the Alexander Redondo. Um, so that's out there, but I know that uh, in terms of the other victims who were Frostburg State University students, I know that their names have not been published yet. and. Um, I don't plan to start that today. I'm going to respect their privacy and give them the benefit of the doubt that they do not want their names out there. So I have redacted those names and we are not going to be um, divulging those names uh, for the purpose of this video. So if you see those redactions, that is what that is for. So with that being said, let's just hop right into the, uh, the charging documents, the affidavit for probable cause for uh, this J the Javon Vincent uh, Epifanio. So we start right here. Here was his mugshot. Um, this is going to be, uh, this crime obviously occurred in Allegheny County, Maryland. So that's where this is going to be based out of. So uh, right here, we have the, uh, this is the first page of the charging document. This is also an arrest warrant. So let's see. First page. As you can see, sort of just breaks down some of the charges that we're going to be seeing in the pages to come. Page two, so we start off uh, bingo with the uh, charge number one. We see the that's the big one. We have murder in the first degree. That's count one. Count two is um, conspiracy to commit murder in the first degree. And then three, four, five, six... Charge 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, all the way up to charge 12 are going to be for um, assault charges. So you have first degree assault and second degree assault. And then 13, you have reckless endangerment. 14, you have reckless endangerment. 15, reckless endangerment. And then they're all going to be reckless endangerment charges up until charge 18, which is for disorderly conduct. Again, um, as you can see, Alexander Redondo, I have not redacted his name, but the assault charges, as you can see, with names redacted, these relate to, I guess, the, um, the other wounded uh, victims who, who, again, I will not be naming, but who also uh, were victimized by this incident. So they are listed in this charging document as well. So the, uh, the complainant, uh, this is going to be somebody with, I would assume, the Allegheny 
County uh, Sheriff's Office or the uh, perhaps the Frostburg City Police, but this is Detective M. Scheimer. And then this is the first page of the application, the actual application for statement of charges. So let's just hop right into what it is, the finite details that the state alleges against this um, Javon Vincent Epifanio. So it starts off on May 7th, 2023, officers responded to 70 East College Avenue, Frostburg, Maryland for a report of shots fired. Upon arrival, officers observed a large crowd gathered outside of the residence and in the area. Officers were alerted to several individuals suffering from gunshot wounds. This is the first victim right here with a name redacted. Uh, so victim one, I'll, I'll say, was located on the ground on East College Avenue with multiple gunshot wounds to the lower body. Officers provided aid to this individual. EMS was later contacted and the individual was taken to UPMC, Western Maryland, for the treatment of the gunshot wounds. Uh, officers were alerted to a second gunshot victim who was lying in the grass area of the Center Street parking lot on Frostburg State University campus. This victim was identified as Alexander Redondo. Officers observed a large amount of blood in the area and blood on the victim's stomach, neck, and face. Redondo was unresponsive upon officer's arrival. CPR was performed on Redondo by officers until the emergency medical services arrived. And officers cut the victim's clothing to try to locate the victim's wound. Officers located a wound to the chest of Redondo, but Redondo was uh, later transported to UPMC Western Maryland for treatment. Officers secured the crime scene and requested investigators. Investigators were dispatched to the scene and to UPMC Western Maryland. While responding to the scene, it was learned that an additional victim, currently at Potomac Valley Hospital in Kaiser, West Virginia, uh, an investigator was sent to that location as well. That victim was identified with the following information. And again, this is not a deceased person. This is somebody who was a victim. We have redacted her name as well. Um, but this is somebody who had gunshot wounds to the lower body. Investigators at UPMC Western Maryland learned that Redondo was pronounced deceased a short time after arrival. Investigators learned that um, this is one of the victims who did, was not deceased, was being prepared for surgery for injuries sustained from the gunshot wounds. But in addition, two other victims of gunshot wounds were later identified as following. And again, these were two more victims um, who had sustained gunshot wounds. These two right here, you can see me circling with my mouse around these two individuals right here. Again, not deceased victims, deceased, uh, victims that um, I'm not going to identify uh, here and now, but it goes on to say that these two victims right here uh, sustained a lower body gunshot wound, and um, one of them did not receive medical attention, but indicated that he had been grazed from a gunshot on his upper body, and that this was discovered uh, the next day on uh, the 8th of uh, that month. So, moving on, page 2 of 6, we want to go to 3 of 6. So at this point, investigators begin speaking with numerous individuals in the Frostburg, Maryland area and watching surveillance footage. Officers learned from witnesses who were at 70 East College Avenue at the time of the shooting that a large party was occurring prior to the shooting. Uh, during the course of the evening, Redondo was in the basement area of 70 East College Avenue. While in the basement, Redondo alerted his friends to the fact that numerous masked black male individuals had come into the party. Redondo reported to his friends that he had problems with the males in the masks as they had an ongoing feud. A short time after the males in masks entered the basement area of the party and gunshots were fired. Numerous wit witnesses indicated that one of the males described above in a mask was observed with a gun out while at the party. This person with the gun was in the basement of the home. Several tips were called into the police department to include a tip that the same individuals in masks on Saturday night at the party were at a party at Edgewood Commons on Friday evening. Due to this, due to this contact was made with an 
employee of Frostburg State University, identified here and after as confidential source one. So what this is, is this is a confidential source who's about to tip them off to some information. So on May 8, 2023, an interview was conduct conducted with confidence confidential source number one, and that person divulged the following information as it relates to, um, I guess, some of the suspects. So number one, it says on Friday, May 5th, 2023, uh, they were contacted by another employee of Edgewood Commons and advised of a party with loud music in a unit of the complex. Confidential source number one stated that the other employee advised that they initially made contact with the tenants of the unit and was advised that the music would be turned down. Confidential source number one advised that the tenants did lo not lower the music and they attempted to again make contact with the tenants. Confidential source number one advised that upon knocking on the door, they did not receive a response. Confidential source stated that they and the other Edgewood Commons employee, accompanied by the supervisor, returned to the unit and again attempted to make contact. Confidential source stated that the tenants again did not open the door and that the supervisor keyed in to enter the unit and announce their presence. They stated that uh, upon making entry, they observed seven to eight male subjects and multiple female subjects inside the unit. They stated that the female subjects then exited the unit and the male subjects were asked to provide identification as alcoholic beverages were observed in the room. Um, they stated that the male subjects failed to provide ID as asked staff to and asked them to cut them a break due to uh, Cinco de Mayo celebrations. Um, this confidential store stated that seven out of the eight male subjects were wearing ski masks at the time and advised that some of the subjects had their faces covered by the masks while others had the masks on their head. Uh, confidential store stated that all of the male subjects were wearing all black attire at the time and advised that the subjects were then escorted off of the property. So confidential source was asked if they knew any of the male subjects they responded that they did not know them, but advised they recognized them at the party on Saturday night. Uh, confidential source number one confirmed that they were referring to the party at 70 East College Avenue. Uh, confidential source number one stated that while at the party, two of the male subjects entered the party, acknowledging that they recognized them from the previous night, stating that the two subjects exited the party and returned moments later with approximately five other subjects. Uh, confidential source Number one stated that one of the subjects was staring at them, and as they looked down, they observed a handgun in the subject's hand near his pants, and uh, confidential source number one was able to describe in detail the gun he observed and was able to describe that this individual was with seven others, all of whom he recognized from the night before at Edgewood Commons. So basically what you have here is somebody who is at this party, at this 70 East College Avenue party, who recognizes these gentlemen um, from a previous party uh, at another time and uh, is now uh, divulging that information to investigators so that they can uh, put the puzzle pieces together. Uh, confidential source number one recalled that as they left the party, they had to brush shoulders with the subjects as they were standing in a line near the door. Confidential source number one advised that there was only one exit from the basement of the residence. Confidential source number one stated that all of the male subjects were wearing were wearing all black and were wearing the same ski masks from the previous incident at Edgewood Commons. Uh, confidential source stated that all of the masks were black in color and that one or two of them may have had a brand name on them in white lettering. Confidential source reviewed the video footage from Edgewood Commons related to the incident on Friday, May 5th. Upon reviewing the footage of the incident, uh, he pointed out the eight individuals that were escorted from the housing complex following the noise complaint on May 5th. Uh, he stated that these individuals were definitely the same group that they observed at the incident at 70 East College Avenue on May 6th. Their surveillance footage from Edgewood Commons was shown to multiple witnesses, 
the following individuals were identified as being at the party on Friday at Edgewood Commons, Commons and at the same scene of the shooting Saturday evening by witnesses. So these gentlemen uh, right here were the same people who were observed at the Cinco de Mayo party um, who were also there at the time of this shooting. So it's this, these three people right here. So this uh, Daquan Tyrone Guy, Benjamin L. Uh, Tatum, and Javon Vincent Epifanio. So in addition to the identified individuals, there were an additional five young black males with the aforementioned both on Friday night at Edgewood Commons and at 70 East College Avenue when the shooting occurred. So in addition to these three people, there was also an additional five people who were um, at this uh, 70 East College Avenue party when the shooting occurred. So moving on to page five. Um, immediately after the eight individuals are viewed leaving Edgewood Commons, two gray in-collar SUVs are observed leaving the parking lot in close proximity to each other. Witnesses who are familiar with the victim and the suspects indicate that the masked men described above are in an ongoing feud with a group of people to include Redondo. Witnesses who were present at the time of the shooting advise that the group of masked men formed a semicircle around Redondo just prior to shots being fired. One of the masked individuals at the party displayed a black and color semi-automatic handgun containing an extended magazine. Uh, and then after, this is when they start looking at surveillance footage, uh, they observe the following. Uh, near midnight, vehicle one traveling east on College Avenue passing University Drive. Uh, again, just a couple seconds later, vehicle two traveling east on College Avenue passing University Drive. Uh, vehicle one on College Avenue passing Wood Street. Vehicle two, College Avenue passing Wood Street. Um, again, almost at midnight here. Uh, headlights observed on alley beside 70 East College Avenue. Second set of headlights observed on alley beside 70 East College Avenue. It says vehicle one and two are not observed on College Avenue driving towards Center Street at this time. Then it just goes on to um, give a description of the surveillance footages that they were able to pull from that night. Then it says that this is at 12, 10 a.m., you notice a large amount of people observed running from the area of 70 East College Avenue, which coincides with the time of the shooting, according to witnesses. Then you have at 12:11 um, a.m., Vehicle 1 observed exiting the alley beside 70 East College Avenue onto College Avenue towards Center Street. Um, and then just a few seconds later, you see that same vehicle turning left onto Center Street from College Avenue. Um, just a few seconds after that, Vehicle 2 observed on College Avenue at University Drive containing or continuing toward Broadway Street. The time frame in relation to the vehicles is indicative of the fact that these individuals were involved with the shooting and immediately left the scene of the crime upon its completion. Uh, information later learned through MVA records that Benjamin Ateum operates a 2011 Gray Ford Escape with Maryland registration 1EC2995. MVA records also confirm da Daquan Guy has a 2003 Gray Infinity FX45 with MD plates 5Z1502 registered to him. Both of these vehicles match the descriptions of the vehicles observed leaving both Edgewood Commons and 70 East College Avenue following the shootings. The vehicles owned by Guy and Atayim match the description of the vehicles leaving Edgewood Commons the night before. Witnesses who were present during the party at Edgewood Commons on Friday were able to confirm that Daquan Guy, uh, Benjamin Atayim, and Javon Epifanio were present at the time of the party and were asked to leave by an employee of Frostburg State. These same witnesses were able to review the surveillance footage from that night and were able to identify Guy, Atayim, and Epifanio in the video. Epifanio and Guy are known associates of one another. During an investigation into a shooting in April 2022, it was discovered that Javon Epifanio 
while accompanied by Daquan Guy, discharged a firearm at the corner of College Avenue and Wood Street, Frostburg, Maryland. Based upon witness statements and surveillance video, the above-named individual was with the same group of individuals Friday night and were again observed together Saturday at 70 East College Avenue at the time of the shooting. Uh, this individual acted with the previously named individuals to commit the murder of Alexander Redondo. And uh, this is the two big ones right here, murder first degree of an adult victim and uh, murder first degree conspiracy charges. And then it goes on to say all events occurred in Allegheny County, Maryland, which gives them the jurisdiction to try the case in Allegheny County, Maryland. So that's where the charging document ends right there. I hope um, that was able to put some clarity onto a situation that a lot of people were uh, concerned over. A lot of people had a lot of questions uh, relating to this case. They were wondering when the suspects were going to get caught. Um, they were wondering uh, what the timeline looked like here, but that is their affidavit of probable cause. That is going to be the clearest indication of what happened um, at that party. These are documents that are written by the investigators and uh, these are the documents that, that state what the crime is and state what the timeline is uh, of these crimes. So uh, obviously they are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. But again, these right here, we're going to put them back on the screen. This Javon uh, Epifanio and uh, Benjamin Laurent Atayim, uh, both presumably uh, sitting in jail as we speak on charges of uh, first degree murder and uh, conspiracy to commit murder. So um, uh, it's going to be a long road ahead for these gentlemen, but obviously very, very, very uh, troubling allegations for these gentlemen. Um, and they are looking at potentially life in prison if uh, convicted of these charges. Um, but again, um, this is what we know at this time. I thought it was important for me to provide an update um, as it relates um, to the story that I first broke about a couple days ago, uh, maybe a week ago. Um, but we'll see how this plays out. But obviously, we have a um, shaken up community at Frostburg State University. We have a young man who is now deceased uh, as a result of this shooting. And just a lot of, lot of heartbreak here. So if this was able to um, shine a light a little bit more on what happened here, um, then I have done my job successfully. So thank you for watching this video. I appreciate it. And I will catch you the next time.